Printed estimates look about the same as estimates on the screen. All the subtotals, markup, and totals on the screen are also in the printed estimate. Overhead and profit are in the estimate only if you've entered percentages for markup. The line Total Only Subcontract Costs is the sum of subcontract or lump sum costs. Anytime the estimate includes a total only cost, no material, labor, or equipment cost, you'll see a figure on the total only line. Estimate total is the sum of the subtotal, overhead, and profit lines. Tax comes after the estimate total if you've set tax rates. The last line is the grand total, the bid price. Printed estimates are easier to read when I put a blank line below each line of costs. See if you don't agree. I'll page up so you can see more of the estimate. This estimate is single spaced. Now watch what happens when I click on the double space lines button. See the difference? I think it's much easier to read. Now I'll turn double space off by clicking again. The button is darker now, and the estimate isn't double spaced anymore. The button is a double space switch toggle on, toggle off. The only thing wrong with double spacing is that it cuts down on how much of the estimate you can see. I usually single space until it's time to print. When printing is done, go back to single space. Sometimes you want to revise an entire estimate column up or down by a few percent. For example, you might want to revise all cost estimates down 10% because the area modification factor is minus 10% for the job site. Or maybe I want to increase all costs by 25% so I don't have to show a 25% markup on the overhead and profit lines. Here are the column totals before making any change. Let's boost the material cost by 15%. I'm going to change material costs, so I tab to material. I'll increase material costs by 15%. I'm finished making percent changes, so I'll click on OK. The material cost is 15% more now. To reduce costs in a column, just type a minus sign and then the percentage to deduct. On an insurance job, you'll probably want to show both the cost per unit and the extended cost. The Per Unit button lets you show both. I'll page up and then click on Per Unit. I'll also double space. The top line is the per unit cost. The bottom line is the extended cost for the same item. Notice that the Per Unit button is highlighted. To switch back, just click on the Per Unit button again. I've toggled off and the Per Unit button isn't highlighted. I'll also turn off double spacing. Sometimes you want to submit alternate bids. For example, an alternate bid for a job could include upgrades to hardware and fixtures. To create an alternate bid, just save the estimate with a different name. To create an alternate bid for this job, I'll click on File, then on Save As. I'll type the name, and then click on Save. It should be on disk. Let's check it. There it is. Saving as Estimate 3 didn't change the original Estimate 2 at all. But the original Estimate 2 isn't open anymore. What's open is Estimate 3. Until I start making changes, it's just a copy of Estimate 2. Just to avoid confusion, I'll change the title of this estimate. Save As is the perfect way to make copies of an estimate. In the next frame, I'll show how Save As can make a copy of an estimate on a different disk drive. It's easy to copy an estimate to another disk, such as a removable disk or a network drive. The first step is to click on File, then on Save As. 
I can select a different disk drive in the Save As dialog box. Here's the network drive I want. This is the estimate I want to save. So I'll click on Save. Now, a copy of Estimate 3 is on the network drive. Saving in a different format is almost as easy. I'll show you in the next frame. Suppose we want to check spelling in an estimate, or add several pages of contract language, or add some specs to a bid. Suppose we want to add our company logo to an estimate. All those are options when you export an estimate to a program such as Microsoft Word or Excel. I've got Excel running here. I'll go back to Estimate 3 by holding the Alt key down while I press Tab. In the next frame, I'll export Estimate 3 to Excel. To export an estimate, click on File, and then on Save As. Here are the format choices. For word processing, click on Text File. For Excel, click on Tab Separated. And I'll save in the My Documents folder. The correct file name is estimate3.tab. The .tab is important. It's done. I'll open the exported estimate in the next frame. I've saved Estimate 3 as a TAB file in the My Documents folder. Now let's pick it up in Excel. Excel is already running. All I have to do is hold the Alt key down and press Tab to switch to Excel. In Excel, I'll click on the Open button. In the File Name box, I'll type star.tab and press Enter. Here's what we want. I'll double click on it. In the import wizard, I'll click on finish. Here it is. Note that National Estimator puts numbers, not formulas, in spreadsheet cells. If you revise costs after exporting to a spreadsheet, add formulas that compute new row and column totals. I'm done here. So I'll go back to Estimate 3. You can export an estimate to any word processing program that will read a text file. But there's a better way if you use Microsoft Word. I've got Word running on this computer. I'll click Edit and select all of Estimate 3. And I'll click to copy. I'll jump into Word by holding down the Alt key while I press Tab. I'll click to paste. Now we've got Estimate 3 in MS Word. I'm done here, so I'll go back to Estimate 3 and open the construction cost book.